Welcome to the Juggling the Chaos of Recovery podcast, where we focus on health and wellness and overcoming all types of addictions. You're in the right place if you're a mom, dad, sibling, or caregiver who has a loved one who is or was struggling with an eating disorder or any other kind of addiction. In a time where everything seems heavy, I'm here to bring you a very real yet lighthearted take on what the heck we're all supposed to do with our lives while we care for our loved ones who are struggling. One thing holds true throughout it all. You can't juggle the chaos without smiling, at least a little bit. Well, welcome to my podcast. This is Moira Gorski. It has been a long time. It seems like since I've done a solo episode. So I've been thinking about this topic for a little bit and so wanted to come on here and make sure that I recorded this for you. First of all, starting out by saying thank you so very much. Um, I hear some wonderful feedback from you. I'm so grateful that you listen, that you come back, uh, that you send me that feedback. And um, it's it's an amazing thing after two and a half, almost three years of uh, recording and sharing these episodes out to you. I am forever grateful for those that listen, those that uh, share these episodes, and they're those that get filled with wonderful wisdom and knowledge and things like that from the stories that I share. I'm just so, so grateful. And today I want to talk a little bit about choices and comparison and success. Now, if you do follow me over on social, and I encourage you to find me over there, you'll find me um, on Instagram, Green Gorski, Moira Gorski over there on uh, Facebook, as well as on LinkedIn. Um, I have been involved in ballroom dance for the last two years, taking ballroom dance lessons and occasionally taking, um, taking it to the next step and going to a competition. And um, I am learning to love to dance, and um, I love a good competition, and I do also love to get dressed up. And, <laughs> and those are all things that you get from dance competitions. And um, so this last one was uh, no exception. It was a great competition, uh, extremely competitive, which I didn't realize until I got there. And, um, you know, got to dress up in one of my beautiful uh, dresses that I own and uh, went, to, went to go and dance. And what I found is, as I was doing my meditation for the last, for the couple of days leading up into that competition, uh, one of the ones that I heard that really stuck out to me was one about choices and the choices that we make each day and that, you know, what we're choosing and just realizing that, you know, the things that are happening in our lives, the things that we are doing the things that um, are occurring, so much is because of the choices that we're making. And so if we're unhappy with what's happening or if we're happy with what's happening uh, or anywhere in between, we need to realize that it's because of the choices that we made. And so if we want things to be different, we can make different choices, right? Or just being present to the fact that, okay, I'm here, I made this choice, and so... I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be present. I'm going to be, I'm going to be here. And, um, and so that really came into play as I went into this competition, had an awful lot of fun in the evening, did some nightclub dancing and, and walked away with, uh, um, you know, a number one with my partner and it was just fun. And again, chose to do that. Um, I haven't, I'm a smooth dancer, so I tend to compete in that. So things like waltz, tango, foxtrot, Viennese waltz, and the rhythm dances tend to be a little bit of a struggle for me. Well, not struggle, but I'm just not, I'd say I'm not, I mean, I'm not as comfortable dancing them and and competing in them. But recently I've done a little bit more of the nightclub, the salsa bachata. And so I felt comfortable enough to compete and we had an awful lot of fun and um, had a great victory there. And then the next day was a smooth competition. And um, a wonderful time to dance um, and felt pretty good about things. And yet, as the afternoon came along and it came close to the, um, the competitive rounds where we get, you know, the marks and we get, you know, then you get placed if you have, you know, you get placed one, two, three, four, five, six, those kind of things. I just felt myself getting, like realizing I was a little bit more nervous 
than I thought I was and a little bit more edgy. And I really thought that I was going into this much more relaxed. And those and that meditation kept coming back to me. Okay, you're choosing to be here. And this is a expensive hobby. It is something that not many people do. And so just, you're choosing to be here, Moira. So just be here, be grateful, put a smile on your face, relax. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, right? It matters to me how I do, because I always, in anything in life, I want to show up, I want to show up good and, um, and do well and put a good face forward and those kind of things. But I'm not you know, competing to go to the Olympics or to go to be a pro dancer. It doesn't matter in that regard. It does matter, again, how I'm doing, um, but I'm choosing to be there. So I just continue to come back to that and think about, okay, you chose this, so be grateful and be here and things like that. And so it worked for a while, but I also started to look around. Again, I could feel the competition in the air. This was, again, an extremely competitive competition, and I could just feel it when we would go out on the floor, when we'd sit down and I'd look around at the dancers. It was really competitive. And it started to get inside of my head, if you will, that whole comparison thing. And um, and it, it really made an impact on how well I danced and um, not always really good. Again, it just really, that comparison game started to play. And um, I was well aware of it, but sometimes, I don't know, do you feel this? Sometimes when those kind of things start happening... It's hard to stop. It's hard to stop it. And um, again, I was realizing that was happening, but it was definitely um, impacting. And um, again, in the end, really, when you look at ballroom dance, and if we can think about other things too in life, at this point, there's really is no comparison because what I'm doing is I'm going to compete. And yes, I'm trying to do well against others and perhaps get you know place. I always like to place and come home with some type of you know, metal, if you will. But there's really no comparison because I, as my daughter explained it to me one time, she said, it's kind of like a swim meet, mom. You should go and try to just do better than you did the last time. And that's what somebody reminded me of at the comp. It's like, are you actually one of my friends who showed up? She said, the most important thing is, do you feel good dancing? Do you feel like you've done a little bit better than the last time you were at a competition? And are you having fun? And that's really what it's all about. But, um, and when you think about it, again, when you look at a dance competition, the people out on the floor, they're all at different levels. We'd all didn't start at the same time. They've all been dancing at different times. They're at different levels. And, um, and so really doing a comparison, like a direct comparison, there's just no use to that. It really is that, as my friend said, are you feeling good? Are you doing better than last time? And are you having fun? And quite honestly, I was. I was doing better. I was with a new partner. And so just getting adjusted to dancing with him in a competition, um, you know, takes a little bit. Um, But I was having fun. But that comparison game just really played, played a part. And so what did I choose to do? I mean, I chose to be there. But what I felt was helpful that I wanted to share and perhaps can help you in life is that I was choosing to be there, but it was starting to not feel the greatest. And so... I chose to leave the ballroom. I left the ballroom to just kind of get a break, to shake things off, to um, just try to get myself out of that, like, spinning of like, oh, this isn't going so well. I got a, I got a, I got a phone call with my, from my daughter, so um, I returned that phone call. I sat and um, talked to her and kind of shared what I was going through, and she gave me some great encouragement. Uh, take a, took a few deep breaths walked around a little bit, and then went back into the ballroom. And that helped. Um, it helped until I heard a song that some this group of gals was dancing. They have, you know, we do these partner routines, if you will, but then they also have um, solos, and you can do it by yourself with a partner, with a group of gals. And there was a group of gals doing this beautiful lyrical dance, and it was to a Lauren Daigle song that always reminds me of my mother. And, oh, boy, it was... It just led me to tears. I mean, I, it always does whenever I hear that song. But I, as I reflected back, I was like, oh, maybe that was my mom. <laughs> I think it was my mom. I know it was my mom. Just giving me a little glimpse and a little bit of wink from heaven saying, I gotcha. We're here. You're okay. And it was, um, 
you know, it was a lovely situation. But I came back into the room and then did a um, my final round of uh, the competitive championship rounds. And I did end up placing, uh, placing sixth out of 12. And uh, we finished the we finished the day up brought to you by Gorski Wellness and the possibility of a better you. Are you feeling sluggish? Ready for a change? Need more energy? Up for a bigger challenge? I'm Moira Gorski, retired nurse and wellness advocate. For over 22 years, I've been helping people live healthier lives while making small changes each and every day. Those small changes lead my clients to living a healthier lifestyle with markedly better health. As a brand ambassador for the Shackley Corporation, the most clinically proven wellness company in the world, I guide my clients to make healthier choices each day with their food, supplements, skin care, workouts, and mindset. They say getting started is half the battle. Let's make healthy happen together. If you're ready for simple, natural, sustainable solutions to feeling and looking your best, let's connect. You'll find a link in the show notes or reach out to me at moiragorski.com. Here's to a better you. Again, what I wanted to to really share with you and what I've reflected on as I've journaled about it since then, that's another thing that I always want to add in here because journaling has really become uh, a big part of, of my life. And because of something like this, it's something that I can go to and I can process through. I can talk with other people about my situation and what happened, which I did. I ended up talking with some friends about it that evening and some friends since then. But sitting down and journaling, like, what's really going on here? What's going on here? What am I feeling? Like, why am I comparing? What are these, you know, what's this angst inside of me? Why am I not as relaxed as I thought I was? And all those kind of things, writing those things down really helped me process through this and really think about, again, about what I was hearing about with choices, what we choose to do, if we're not happy with it, again, we can change it. But just also being present to the fact that, okay, okay, what's happening now? This is what I chose to do. Not many can choose to do this for various reasons. And so being here and being present and being joyful and being happy and putting away all of that, the rest. Again, that comparison, there's really no use for that. I mean, comparison is a thief of all joy. And I started to feel that that day and really worked um, so hard to to change that and um, to just identify, like, why am I feeling like, you know, com- that I need to compare myself to these ladies that I know nothing about and that there's no reason for that. Um, so that's another message to all of you today is just that comparison is just not necessary. It really is the thief of all joy. And, um, and then this morning, as I was doing my morning meditation, I ran across uh, one of my daily readings, and it was talking about success and planning. And I feel like it goes right along with this experience that I had with my dance competition, and the choices that we make and the success that we um, that we can have in our lives. Um, you know, this, this meditation, well, it's re- daily reading that I do often from John Maxwell. It's a Maxwell daily reading book. Maybe you have that, um, or I've heard of it, or maybe you've heard of John Maxwell. He's a wonderful, wonderful, successful businessman, has some incredible books that I've read, many on leadership. But in this particular reading, Lester Thoreau points out that a competitive world has two possibilities for you. You can lose, or if you want to win, you can change. (laughs) So again, there, um, and then he talks about once you develop a plan and put it into action, you're not finished. In fact, if you want to succeed, you're never finished. Success is in the journey, the continual process. And no matter how hard you work, you will not create the perfect plan or execute it without error. You will never get to the point that you no longer make mistakes, that you no longer fail, but that's okay. Because failures are milestones on the success journey. Every time you plan, risk, fail, reevaluate, and adjust, you have other opportunities to begin again, only better than the last time. And as 67-year-old Thomas Edison said, as his laboratory burned to the ground, thank goodness all our mistakes are burned up. Now we can start again fresh. 
I just thought that was great, a great kind of tie up of what I was thinking about and what I was experiencing and what I wanted to share with you from this dance competition and from life is that we have we have choices and we have, you know, sometimes we're successful and sometimes we feel like we lose. Sometimes we feel like we fail. But in the end, I think many, I've heard this said before, you know, we win or we learn. And life isn't about always being perfect. Life isn't always about winning, right? And beating the person next to you or winning the game. It's about the journey. And, and it's up and down and it's up and down and it's up and down and there's failures and there's successes and failures and successes. But again, it gets back to the choices that we're making and how we're really viewing that journey of life and knowing that it's okay, that sometimes it's going to be a good day. Sometimes it's going to be a not so good day. And then we have those choices. When we have those choices and we take advantage of the choices, then I think that's where all your power is and that appreciation of what you have and how it is that journey. And we can readjust and we can reevaluate. And there's another opportunity that comes. There'll be another competition for me that I'm, that's going to be totally different than the, than the last one, because there will be different people there. There'll be different music. There'll be different judges. There'll be different experiences. I'll have had more training, all of those kind of things. And so you know, the opportunity is to begin again, to create something new, to continue to move forward and to know that perhaps next time it'll be better than the last time. And that's okay. And one of my friends said to me, who so wonderfully came to, to watch me, uh, while I competed and she's one of my dance friends who dances at another studio. She said to me, you know, Moira, don't you think, I think it's better to come to these competitions that are pretty, that are good, that are, they have great dancers here. There's just real good competition because it does help you rise up to that next level. And it, it, you know, to come up to that competition, we do pay, you know, we pay a good amount of money to dance. Um, and for all the training and stuff like that, she said, it's better to come to a competition like this, that you can really, really bring your skills up and see you know, and do what, you know, it's competitive as opposed to going to these competitions. And maybe there's a couple people in your age group and maybe it's not very competitive and you pay all that money and yeah, you get the first place, but you know, how is that a whole lot different than when you go to do a practice at your, at your studio? And I thought that those were really wise words from her. Um, again, that, and that's the person that I am. I want to be able to, I put a lot of effort into the things that I do, be it this podcast, my business, my dancing, I put a lot in. And so sometimes I do have those really high expectations that I'm going to, it's just going to be really good. And I like that because it pushes me to do better, to go better, to, you know, um, but, and so that's, that was really wise words from her because that's where I want to be is a place that challenges me, that makes me think that really puts me in that journey of life that I really want to be in that is, is challenging. And that can, I, I can challenge to be better, to learn and things like that. And so I was grateful for that. So I just want to continue to say thank you for being here for me. I'm so grateful for this opportunity that I have to share my voice and to share other people's stories and share other people's lives with you along with my life. Um, I am very humbled by uh, the support and really do appreciate it because as I've learned over time, and so importantly, the last almost three years is that my voice does have value, but you know what? You, yours does too. Your voice has value. Your story has value. And there is sometimes in the mess of life, even when you're crying at a dance competition, there is a message in that mess. There's a message that you need to hear. There's a message that other people need to hear. And I want you to know that it's okay to share your story and you should share your story because as we share our stories with others, we, other people realize that they're not alone in their journey of life. And, and that's okay when we can come together and support each other and know that we're not alone and that we can learn from each other and be in this life together. It's a really good thing. So 
I hope you learned something and took something of value from my podcast today about choices and about comparison and about self-comparison, about success, about our journey of life. And, um, and leave today feeling like, yeah, what are the choices that I'm making today? Being grateful for the choices that you are making, being grateful for the life that you have. And um, if you want things to be different, then you can choose different. But know that there's ups and downs. We win. We sometimes don't win, but we learn along the way. And that learning journey is really what's so, so important as we're grateful for the days that we have. So thanks again for joining me. I am your host, Moira Gorski, and uh, please continue to share these. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, head over to iTunes and leave me a five-star review. Share it with others and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. I've got a tribe over on Facebook, so head over there and search for Juggling the Chaos of Recovery Podcast Tribe. And do you know somebody who has a story, a story to share, a story of recovery and hope? Please let me know as I'd love to feature them as a guest on one of these next upcoming podcasts. And perhaps you're looking for a community of like-minded, collaborative, and supportive people who cheer each other on as we strive to improve our lives. If that sounds like something you've been looking for, schedule some time with me. You'll find the links in the show notes. Let's talk and let me help you find your way. And I'm here to tell you that you're worth it.